Good morning, good morning, good morning. Just a short video this morning. That was the junction of death. Um, something took my mind about something I was going to bring up yesterday, but didn't have time anyway. This journey to work is good. It, it sort of imposes quite a good uh, discipline on me in terms of timing because I can't rant on, you know. It takes me 22 minutes to get from the paper shop to work and um, that's what I've got, you know. Anyway, um, I was just listening to uh, Ron Paul, who uh, uh, was a Republican, uh, American Republican senator, I think, probably for Texas. He's from Texas and uh, also um, a candidate for president on twice, I think, on more than one occasion anyway. And um, he does a regular daily podcast called the Ron Paul Liberty Report. It's well worth having a listen in. He's a libertarian by philosophy and uh, so um, you know and he's one of these people that's able to make it into a really sort of coherent model of the world so it's all very well having the views on a particular subject and then but then if someone can attack them at the edges and say yes well what you said is X and Y but X actually isn't compatible with Y under these circumstances and uh, but he's not like that. He's reconciled all the all the uh, inherent contradictions in his argument, and um, and he's he's quite a coherent speaker. Anyway, he um, he said that uh, in his career as a senator, he was a Republican senator, as I say, but he didn't really um, uh, go into the Senate to just top up the number of senators by one more Republican. He went in because um, he wanted to get a, a wider forum for his views, you know, so that he could uh, he could have an audience on the national stage for the sort of politics that he espoused. And uh, it's true that he, because he didn't toe the party line, um, he tended he, he got isolated. You know, he was seen as an outsider and and mischaracterised as a bit of a crank. Uh, in the same way as uh, in a lunatic asylum, the only sane person would be would be seen as the mad one. <laughs> so, and this is, uh, I mean, that touched a nerve with me because uh, that's really what the, the GDPA and the DFO was mischaracterised as a bit, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, extreme and uh, 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 having ideas that are outside the mainstream and all that. And then and dismissed by the group because there's a lot of groupthink and a lot of uh, tribalism in politics. And one way of uh, eliminating enemies is to um, ostracise them, you know, to isolate them, to shun them. Anyway, um, that uh, I found that quite interesting because um, uh, John McAfee of McAfee Antivirus, although he's no longer associated with McAfee Antivirus. Uh, is thinking of running for the presidency again and he's going to do it on a libertarian um, platform and again he's not doing it he says he says nobody in their right mind would expect him to get elected as president but the platform is um, worthwhile you know it's worth the money to run just to have the news organizations turn up on your doorstep and ask you why you're running and what your views are etc etc it's once every five years or so it's it's an opportunity to sort of promote yourself and and your ideas if you're well resourced enough and well financed enough to do it so it, it, it struck me as the you know I mean I'm thinking well the actual um, race for president now is being sort of changed isn't it it's, it's a race for the media as well it's becoming a race for the media the media is very powerful and a way of spreading uh, thoughts and uh, ideas and memes and things like that access to the global media or your local media is or even being your own local media is uh, very powerful to the point where people will run for president just for access to the media and not even because they expect that they're going to end up being president. What you say to people and the messages they receive is, uh, can vary from the facts. And uh, the 
you know the, the the sort of the slow deterioration or the increasingly rapid deterioration now in NHS dentistry is is a battle for um, information and facts as much as it is for dentistry uh, or about the clinical dentistry anyway and um, you know we've gone through the phase of um, seeing patients who've had a instead of having a three-unit bridge, abutment, pontic, abutment, they've had a two-unit bridge, abutment, pontic, and then and then the next course of treatment had a crown uh, to double the uh, band C payment that the dentist receives. And now we're getting, um, I'm noticing another, a new phenomenon, and I'm not, I'm not gonna say that things won't get worse than this, because every time I think oh, I can't get worse than this, it gets worse than this. And the new phenomenon that I'm seeing is patients who are literally being told, told something which is palpably untrue. You know, they're literally being, uh, I wouldn't, I, 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 you, some people would probably go so far as to say that they were being lied to. I, I think that they are being severely misled. And an example of that sort of thing is, um, uh, where, for example, um, somebody doesn't want to do a root treatment, and the simplest, you know, the simplest one, and I'm sure it's been around for a long time, is where someone didn't want. It's only been around since we switched off of off of piecework. Once, when we were on piecework, everyone wanted to do root treatments because they were well paid. Now, and then when we went to this ridiculous one size fits all payment system, nobody wants to do root treatments because they were complicated, expensive, and fiddly, time consuming, and they they weren't paid. You didn't get paid for them. So, you know, the, 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 at its most basic level, a patient who needs a root treatment is just told that the tooth is hopeless, it can't be saved, and that they need to have the tooth out. And I'm sure that goes on routinely up and down the country all day, every day. And then um, you've got um, the next step, which is basically a more subtle version of it, where the patient has, you know, perhaps has had a root treatment done, but it's, it hasn't worked, it's been done badly, there's still something wrong with it, and then, the, the patient is then told that uh, uh, it can't be rectified. You know, that, that, that it's been done once. Basically, it's been done once. That's what they're not told. They're told, no, it's been done once and it's not going to be done again. Um, except that they're not sort of told that. They're sort of, referral to specialists is uh, the, the new way of putting it. And We've had a few patients in lately who came to us from the NHS, as, as quite a few do now, and we're, they're just told um, that uh, the dentist doesn't have the confidence to do the work. And not having the confidence is, um, is a complicated issue because the reason why, especially the corporates, have settled on this phrase, uh, not having the confidence, is because it is recognised by the General Dental Council that a dentist should not do work for which he or she is not uh, confident, which is he or she is not confident to do. Um, and therefore, you know, there, there is a case to argue, should anyone decide to argue it. And you know, it's quite difficult to say, well, you know, that, that dentist is, um, you know, should do this work that they don't have confidence but um, the that is not the question and the NHS wised up to this you know because when uh, they went over to a one-size-fits-all fee system and uh, the, of course the first thing that crossed dentists mind was to refer all the non-profitable work it was it was like you know oh well we'll just refer all the non-profitable work and then the NHS lot sort of wised up to this and they were like well okay no, you're not going to do that. And why are you not going to do that? Because they don't accept that you're, um, that anyone who works in general practice uh, would, would not be competent to do a large filling, for example, or would be competent to do a molar root treatment, or would be competent to do a surgical extraction. Or So these are all things that you are expected to do. Um, and so if like a UK trained dentist was uh, to say, now I, I referred all my extractions because I don't feel competent to do extractions, then question marks would be asked about whether or not that dentist should be working in general practice. But when you've got a non-UK trained dentist, which a lot of the corporate dentists are, 
uh, and they have a tremendously high turnover of uh, dentists coming in and out of the country. Um, you then have a situation where you know when when they're, and they and they're brought in with a very very low amount of uh, introduction and, and and training in it. And they're sort of more or less dumped in. in I know the corporates will disagree with this and say, oh yeah, they have a big induction, but they, from what I've heard, the stories I've heard is that they're not. They have a, bit, a quick introduction, mainly to the software that's being used in the practice, and uh, perhaps an afternoon on the NHS regs, and then they are expected to work the next day, as fast as any dentist who's been here 20 years. So. Uh, you know, and, and they're told, well, look, don't worry, if you come across anything that you don't feel capable of doing, then just say, I'm sorry, I don't feel comfortable, I don't feel confident doing this work, and, um, and refer the patient to someone else. And, of course, this gets abused. Um, and you can't really blame the uh, non-UK trained dentists, because that, this is what they've been told, they don't know how the system works. They don't know that the GDC might take a dim view of a dentist who's not really confident to do half the stuff that they're supposed to do. And the end result is a patient who comes to us who says, no, you know, I have had, you know, I, I, I've been told that I need X, Y, and Z, but the, the dentist has referred me to the oral surgeons or in, in secondary care because they say they don't feel confident to do the work. And, we're looking at, uh, and it can be as simple as just root treatments and stuff. And we're just we're looking at these patients and thinking, what sort of dentist would have to be not confident to do that? Um, so it's another level, isn't it? It's just another level, and and the oral surgeons must be hopping mad. I mean, I can imagine that they've just got a pro forma letter that says, you know, we 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 we're not either we're not prepared to accept this referral, or we've had a look at this patient and we don't believe that they constitute a specialist. Therefore, uh, you know, if you're going to refer them to anyone, refer them to the uh, dentist in the surgery next to you at the place where you're working, you know, which is what used to happen when you had an associate, you used to refer to the principal and vice versa sometimes on uh, oral medicine and, and the occasional wisdom tooth and stuff like that. So, hello, hello, hello people hanging about all over the place. I think that might be our patient. Yeah. Yeah, so, so, but the whole thing, you know, the whole thing doesn't work as it is supposed to because, ultimately, because the system is, is being abused, right, by the dentist, the, what the dude, the dentists are just—they're um, using the not confident. Um, oh, sorry about the exposure; it's just the time of year. The dentist is using that that, that sort of excuse to um, to refer the patient because it's a contractual reason. That's what I'm saying. It all boils down to contractual. Contractual reasons are the reason why 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 the the system's in the mess it's in. And we're getting um, patients who've been told that they need specialist work when they don't. And all surgeons, I'm sure, are getting um, referrals to specialist oral surgery, which is the sort of stuff that used to be done in general practice and could still be done in general practice by any competent dentist. So anyway, I thought I'd document that further, that further deterioration in the service. And uh, that's me signing out for today. I'll talk to you soon. Bye.